today we will discuss about the cooling system in IC engine. So a IC engine is a heat engine in which uh, heat is generated by burning the fuel inside the cylinder and the heat or temperature of the hot gas is very high tremendous amount of heat or you can say the temperature is very high and actually that much temperature is not good for the engine so that is why a cooling system or cooling system control controlling the heat of the engine is required so a cooling system what does it do it controls the engine temperature why to keep the engine running at its most efficient operating temperature so although the temperature of the hot gases is very high that temperature is not good for the engine other parts of the engine is it is not it should run at a optimum temperature or efficient temperature in which the efficiency of the engine is very good so let's know what is the temperature developed inside the engine the temperature of the gases inside the engine is nearly 2300 to 2500 degrees centigrade so this is a very high temperature this temperature can melt the engine within a few minutes the engine will melt but that temperature is required but not for the material of the engine so this high temperature may result into burning of the lubricating oil we all know that that uh, due to the lubrication the friction is reduced and if we this temperature reaches the lubricating oil then the lubricating oil oil will be will burn and this will form some carbon deposit and due to this carbon deposit the engine will seize or oil leak that means that is called engine chaser seizing of the engine high temperature reaching this parts and temperature should be reduced to about although that is the temperature it should be reduced to about 150 to 200 degrees centigrade and this is the temperature at which the engine work very efficiently gas temperature may be 2300 2500 degrees centigrade but the material should be exposed to this temperature and at this temperature the material properties are very well maintained and other say lubricant uh, properties of the lubricant will also be retained at this temperature and that is why we need a an efficient cooling system to run the engine efficiently so what does the higher temperature do it also lowers the volumetric efficiency of the engine so at high temperature the volume of air that enters into the uh, cylinder will be less in fact the density of air will be less and if density of air is less there will be less oxygen and that will not ensure uh, proper combustion of the fuel that way it affect the efficiency of the engine also and although we are talking about cooling the engine if we cool the engine too much that means over cooling is not desirable so what will happen due to the low temperature so it will reduce the thermal efficiency low temperature means the thermal efficiency will reduce so that is why we need a good cooling system in an engine so let's see what how the heat is utilized and how a cooling system should be designed to fulfill these requirements uh, about 20 to 25 percent of total heat generated is generally used for producing brake power so from this you can get an idea what will be the brake thermal efficiency of the engine in this range 20 to 25 percent maybe 17 15 also that is also okay but that means uh, this amount of heat is converted to mechanical power which we call the brake power and the cooling system 
it should remove 30 to 35 percent of the heat generated in the combustion chamber. So this heat, most of the heat is carried away by the cooling water and 40 to 50 percent, even 60 percent heat is lost in the friction as well as some heat, most of the heat is carried away by exhaust gases. So this is the heat utilization in a IC engine when the main source of heat is combustion of fuel inside the cylinder. So too much removal of heat lowers the thermal efficiency of the that uh, this point is repeated actually uh, just now I have mentioned this point. Now cooling should not work when the engine is warming up that means at the initial uh, state that means when we just start the engine then that engine temperature is low but at this low temperature the cooling system should not work otherwise the tip, see, engine will not be heated optimum temperature it will not reach the optimum temperature so during starting the cooling system should not work or it should be stopped because this engine is warming up it is going to the optimum temperature and if it reaches the optimum temperature then will be it will be of efficient operating temperature so till the optimum temperature is reached the cooling system mechanism should not work that is one requirement of a cooling system in ic engine so we all know you already you have studied probably the types of cooling system basically there are two types one is air cooling system and another is liquid cooling system conventionally we call water cooling system but nowadays water is not uh, used as a water coolant uh, sorry a cooling agent but still if we use the word water then also it is okay that that by that we mean that it is a liquid cooling system and air cooling system is generally you all know it is used in the low horsepower engines like motorcycles scooters small cars also in some cases and some small aircraft engine where the forward motion because the engine moves these vehicles moves and that gives exposure to the new fresh air so that is a good supply of cooling air is available if the engine moves so it gives good velocity to cool the engine that is why it is uh, suitable for scooters motorcycles because the cooling uh, the engine can be exposed to the atmosphere but in a car it is not convenient to expose the engine to the atmosphere now come to the liquid cooling system and this is used in most of the modern the highest hp i see engine and we will discuss these two types of engine the basic principles and basic parts we will try to understand okay so let's see what is air cooling system how does it work so heat is generated inside the cylinder so heat of burning is conducted to the external wall so if this is a cylinder the heat is generated here and this is the wall ultimately the heat will reach this part outer external part and from this the heat should be dissipated to the atmosphere because this is water cooling system and the heat is dissipated to the atmosphere so although the source is this inside the cylinder and this is a metal or alloy part cylinder wall or everything is made of metal or metal some alloy so it will the heat will be conducted to the external sur surface of the engine cylinder or whole engine and from there it will be heat will be rejected to the atmosphere so for that we need something called fins so what are the fins fins are externally it is fitted it is extended surface are provided on the cylinder so if this is cylinder 
this surface area is not that good so if we want to increase this surface area we can use some additional fittings around the cylinder which will increase the surface so this is this whole surface external surface become more so if the surface area is more then heat transfer become faster for example uh, a, whenever we take a cup of tea if we are in hurry generally we used to take the uh, cup of uh, tea on the plate because the plates gives us more surface area and that way heat transfer become more efficient likewise in a water air cooling system the cylinder external wall is extended with the help of some fins and that increases the uh, surface area and that is very useful on the cylinder walls cylinder head etc to increase the contact area and cooling rate so cooling rate become fast because of the fins extended surface okay next the rate and amount of heat dissipated to air depends upon these three factors hmm? how the cooling will be efficient or not it depends on this on number one the total area of the fin surface so this depends on the surface the fins surface sometimes the fin surface may not be sufficient so we have to uh, provide more surface by using fins by while designing the fin so if the fin surface is more then heat transfer will be faster and also velocity and amount of the cooling air so the, i have mentioned that if the engine moves then it will be exposed to the fresh air every time every second every minute it will be exposed to the fresh cool air and if the velocity of the engine or vehicle is higher then it will be exposed to more air and the hot air will be uh, automatically be displaced from that place so that is also a factor the velocity of the cooling air that means if the engine moves that is equivalent to velocity of the air that means as if we are using a fan for supplying uh, fresh air in this case there is no fan necessarily the engine moves so the engine will be exposed to the fresh air it also depends on temperature of fins and the cooling air so suppose this is the fin surface this temperature is t1 and this atmospheric temperature is t2 definitely t1 is greater than t2 and that is why the heat will be uh, dissipated to atmosphere so we know the law of cooling you know at uh, the law of cooling is what the rate of heat transfer is directly proportional to what indirectly proportional to what surface directly proportional to surface area indirectly proportional to and it also depends on the gradient this is called dt temperature gradient that if temperature that means if the atmospheric temperature is already hot suppose a hot climate it is at 47 degrees centigrade maybe delhi rajasthan or so and engine fin temperature is say 100 uh, say 200 degrees centigrade sorry 120 degrees centigrade so uh, 47 degree this gradient is less now again in the winter season or in the other climate the temperature will be definitely 127 degree but atmospheric temperature may be 15 degree centigrade and even though that means this temperature gradient is more so heat transfer will be faster so during hot weather or climate the cooling become less efficient and in cold climate the cooling will be more efficient now there are some advantages for cool uh, air cooling system what the advantages are so these are some fins huh? okay these are fin designs so the air will be exposed to this depending if the engine moves this way that means air will strike from this side and accordingly the heat will be dissipated to the atmosphere so what are the advantages air cooling system are simple and it 
is light in weight the total weight of the engine become light why because air cooling system in air cooling system we need not attach any additional attachment like radiator pump so definitely the engine will be light and the design will be simple hence the system is light and simple to design simply during design you can do but in cooling uh, water cooling or liquid cooling system we need additional things that we will discuss within a few minutes and note issue of leakage of coolant in liquid cooling we need some coolant like water or anything any other fluid suitable fluid so that fluid will flow in a pipeline from one chamber to other chamber chamber when there may be some issue uh, of leakage of the fluid which play the cooling fluid so in at air cooling system there is no fluid only air atmospheric air is there so that issue is not in the air cooling system and coolant and anti freezer freezes solutions are not required in water cooling or in liquid cooling and the during cold season or cold climate the temperature of atmospheric air may be too low and that may cause freezing or solidification of the coolant or water and that is very dangerous so that issue is not in the air cooling system because air never get solidifies or it never freezes so this system air cooling system can be used in extreme cold climates also in fact it is good in extreme cold climate it is good but in extreme cold climate the freezing will be there that means we have to use anti freezers for liquid cooling for what what uh, sorry for air cooling that is not a issue at all so if we would use water then it will freeze but nowadays that is not a issue all almost all coolant available in the markets used by the uh, manufacturers uh, have already got have that property of anti freezing so nowadays that is not a issue at all and air cool engines are cheaper to manufacture and need less care and maintenance air cooling for air cooling you do not you do not have radiator pumps and any other thing or uh, you don't need any additional coolant so if you you do not use any additional parts or coolant so you need not do so much of maintenance and cost will be less running cost is nil almost now for air cooling there are a few disadvantages also so this is the main issue but in fact the comparatively it is less efficient the cooling is less efficient in air cooling system because heat dissipation rate is less that is why it is used in aeroplanes in some aeroplanes because the aeroplanes moves very fast and that way it is exposed to continuously it is exposed to air and also in the motor cycle motor engines motorcycle scooter etc so why this is engines are exposed to air directly but for stationary engine air cooling system is not at all good hmm. stationary engine or car this is not good but for automobiles vehicles or aeroplanes it is to some extent efficient it gives some efficient cooling now come to the liquid cooling system so in this uh, what we need if we have to supply liquid to carry away the heat from the cylinder then definitely we need some uh, pipelines like spaces through which the coolant can pass so that is why we need cooling jackets where it is provided around the cylinder so cylinder sayu phale cooling jacket thake also cylinder head because cylinder head is exposed to tremendous temperature 
सो सिलिंडार हेड और पिने कुलिंग बेलेग थे एंड अल्सो इन एंड एराउंड भाल्व सीट्स भाल्व टू जो मैं भाल्व टू जो फिट हो जाए जगह तो बहुत बेसि टेम्पारेचार पाई थे सिलिंडार हेड इनफेक्ट इट इज सिलिंडार हेड और ऊर जैगा सो देट इज सो इन दोज एरियाज उड टू प्रभाइड कुलिंग जेकेट सो देट द कुलेन केन पास थ्रू दोज जेकेट एंड केरि एवे दिट फ्रम द प्लेसेस लाइक सिलिंडार सिलिंडार हेड भल्व एटसेट्रा नेक्स्ट दि हिट इज केरी एवे यूजिंग ए हिट एबजर्विंग कुलेन देट उव मेनशन उ नीड साम कुलेन देट सार्कुलेट्स थ्रू द कुलिंग जेकेट अब दि इंजिन ब्लक ओके सो दि कुलेन इज pumped through the engine so sometimes we need some pump it is all not always necessary for efficient cooling we need pump to circulate the coolant but we did without pump also it is possible and what happen after absorbing the heat the hot coolant is circulated to the radiator so hot coolant has to be cooled that is why radiator is the place where the hot coolant discharges heat to the atmosphere where the heat is transferred to the atmosphere so what does the coolant do coolant absorbs heat from the engine cylinder around the engine cylinder and the coolant get heated and that heat is dissipated to the atmosphere in a radiator that we will discuss the cool liquid is then transferred back to the engine so after radiator the coolant will again go to the engine and the process is repeated okay good so basically on on the basis of principle there are actually many cooling liquid cooling systems but we will discuss two types that is thermo siphon system and pump circulation system on the basis of principle there are two types of liquid cooling system one is thermo another is pump circulation so in thermo what happen coolant circulates due to the density difference or we can say temperature difference so when the temperature is different say t1 and t2 so because of temperature different we know heat will flow but we are talking about heat flow in this case we are talking about circulation of the coolant so at high temperature say t1 is greater than t2 the density of the fluid will be less so this is rho1 and it is rho to density of the low temperature although temperature t1 is higher than t2 at the same time the density of this fluid hot coolant will be more sorry less less than the density of the colder coolant so based on this due to density difference the coolant circulate itself and it goes on circulating from one place to another one place is radiator and the other place is engine radiator to engine engine to radiator that is the part for the circulation of the coolant next in pump circulation system uh, to make the circulation more efficient faster we use some pumps so this circulation system is pump driven system is not driven by pump the circulation process is driven by the pump so what is the driving force for the circul uh, coolant circulation that is the pump so there is two though these are two different types of cooling system so thermo siphon system what is the first system thermo siphon system because the siphon principle is used and also the effect is the thermo surface uh, thermo principle works because of the temperature difference so let's consider 
this is the engine of the uh, engine we are talking about and we want to cool this engine so around the engine there will be cooling jacket and here we, uh, I am not showing the cooling jacket just imagine the mm, cooling jacket is are there around the engine and the coolant will pass through those cooling jackets so first let's consider how the coolant will enter so definitely the coolant will enter into the engine jackets so while passing through the jackets this coolant will get heated and engine will get cooled so after getting heated this coolant will go to the where it will go it will go to the radiator because this heat of the coolant has to be rejected somewhere and that is done in a radiator so suppose this is a radiator and this radiator has these are the top the chamber this is the bottom chamber and these are some tubes and there will be some more arrangement and air may flow to, to this and we can use some fan also in this case uh, if we arrange one fan then it is good run by the engine then air flow will be from this direction so uh, the hot coolant entered into the top chamber and it will come down to the bottom chamber it may be done forcefully but we are talking about thermosiphon system so it is flowing because of the density difference caused by the temperature difference so this is higher temperature say this is lower temperature so cold coolant will again enter into the engine and this way it will work so what is the circuit this way it will go this way it will come and again this will go so in between there will be definitely some cooling jacket around the engine cylinder around the cylinder head around the valve seat so this way it works so let's see the circulation of water is this is repetition only due to difference in temperature and difference in temperature means difference in densities because higher temperature gives low density and lower temperature gives higher density so that is the cause of the flow of the coolant and so pump is not required so thermosiphon system has no pump for circulation of the coolant so now come to the pump circulation system the arrangement will be almost same only thing is now we need one pump to circulate that so this is the engine and the circulation will be done by the pump suppose this is the pump which forces the coolant to the engine and that is the driving force through engines jackets it will go to the siphon uh, it will go to the radiator also and from radiator it will be again pumped to the engine and others are same only difference is there will be one pump from radiator it is pumped to the from bottom chamber of the radiator it will pump to the engine and that same pumping force will take this fluid to the coolant to the top chamber of the radiator okay so this is radiator okay this is the pump this is bottom part bottom chamber or this is top chamber now what is a radiator just try to understand radiator is consist of an upper tank chamber will be the right term is upper tank and the lower tank okay this is upper tank and this is lower tank the upper tank is connected to the water outlet from the engine so uh, water means coolant coolant will come from the engine to the upper tank the lower tank is connected to the inlet jacket uh, to the jacket inlet that means engine or jacket or inlet or logot kun connected thakibo lower tank to through water pump by means of anator hose pipe okay the pipe connecting this tank to the engine is called hose pipe hose pipe we use in the washing machine 
in this washer in all these things we use hose pipe okay the pipe through which the dishes takes place from the uh, washing machine or dishwasher like this so generally radiator should be good conductor it was to be like good conductor though these are made of copper because copper is a good conductor heat and also brass and their joints are generally soldiered soldier core plate joint kora so these are the core of the radiator we need not study details how radiator is designed or so just you have to understand that radiators are uh, pipes are made of generally copper or brass generally not necessarily so this way it works you try to understand the principle only now liquid cooling engine using thermostat valve so already i have mentioned that the cooling system should not work when the engine is cool at the initial stage of starting the engine so this is radiator this is the pump as usual and this is the engine so the hot coolant will go and it may go to the radiator and although the, we, I call this hot coolant initially this is not hot hot but not that hot it is not very hot so if it goes to the radiator so it will go the circulation will take place so what will happen the engine will not be heated up to the optimum temperature or it will take long time to reach that optimum temperature so that is why we need a valve this is called valve what valve the thermostat valve that means if the temperature is low then this way the uh, flow is stopped and if temperature is sorry so what will be the flow it's okay if the temperature is low then it will take this part because that that is closed but again if the temperature become high after some time then uh, what will happen the circulation will be this way it will be stopped so the circulation will be this way so that is the function of a thermostat valve which control the uh, flow of the coolant depending on the temperature so thermostat valve is a basically uh, some fluid is used which vaporizes at lower temperature and uh, strike the valve and that way the valve will open or close depending upon the temperature so the thermostat valve prevents flow of water or coolant from the engine to the radiator huh? engine reaches to its maximum until the engine reaches maximum efficient operating temperature then once that the temperature is ceased the thermostat valve will open and the circuit will be through the radiator so what that is what is that after attaining maximum efficient operating temperature it automatically begins to function generally it prevents the water flow below 70 degree okay so if the temperature is 50 degree centigrade say this is closed and if it reaches 70 degree generally no, not not necessarily it, it may depend then this will open so that is good because initially during starting condition the in engine temperature is very low atmospheric temperature itself now in a liquid cooling system there are we have discussed radiator thermostat valve also we need one water pump hmm? water pump regard which circulate the water or we can say the coolant in the circuit we also need one fan because in the radiator the heat transfer takes place between atmosphere and the coolant 
so if we can arrange one fan that means supply more air to the radiator the heat transfer between the atmosphere and the coolant will be faster and that is why we need one fan it blows air over the radiator for cooling purpose radiator cooling korbole lage so cooling jacket we need that we have already mentioned why it is necessary so in the water we need to add some anti freeze mixer if the water is used no then it is a problem so nowadays there are so many good quality coolant which does not get freezed so that is not an issue nowadays but for water cooling we need to use some uh, anti freezing additives to the water because in cold climates if the water get condensed those water will be uh, deposited as a solid and what uh, one principle we know the volume of ice or density of ice is less than density of water so if water get condensed then that water volume of that thing will increase and that may cause cracking of the parts hose pipe valves these things may crack because it will, it cannot compensate that increased volume so to look at the ice floats on water because ice has slightly uh, less density less density means the same mass will take more volume so if it is in a chamber like this initially it is water then if it is get condensed then it will expand try to expand because that is the property and this there may be crack on this chamber so now cooling liquid cooling system advantages and disadvantages so advantage is uniform cooling cooling is efficient definitely specific fuel consumption of engine increases if cooling system works well then the engine efficiency will increase and engine is less noisy slightly engine uh, noise will be less compared to air cool engine because the water for damping noise water is a good damping because it dampen the reduces the noise level a few disadvantages it depends upon the supply of water that means coolant if coolant is not there then the whole cooling system will not work and that is very dangerous the water pumps pump absorbs considerable power so for circulating the coolant we need a pump and that pump need to be run by the engine power itself so from the crankshaft a part of the fraction of the power will be utilized by the pump if the water cooling in the water cooling system fails for any reasons if the water cooling system does not work then it will result in severe damage of the engine that is all if we ca if we cannot notice that the water cooling system or liquid cooling system fails then after a within a few minutes the engine will cease because it will be get welded because at higher temperature the material will expand and everything will not work and ultimately it will get seized it happens sometimes the water cooling system is costlier as it has greater number of parts key parts take definitely we have done fan pump siphon uh, sorry uh, thermostat valve and many other things so it requires more maintenance definitely if you use more parts then it, the maintenance will be more and you need to take care of all these things so these are some advantages and disadvantages but from efficiency point of view consumption point of view fuel consumption point of view and the health of the engine overall health the liquid cooling system is 
too much, very much essential. But academically we discuss what are the advantages of this thermal physics, but we cannot use air cooling system in some engines because efficiency will decrease and, and so, so many other things. And material consideration will also be different for those air, water cooling and air cooling. So this is one uh, typical liquid cooling system. So we need not go to the details of everything. You can see where, where is the fan and bottom tank, top tank, radiator core. This is the core of the radiator. So uh, we need not uh, go to the details of this radiator, how it is designed and what are the types of radiator. But for if you have interest, you can study different types of radiator. Okay. So with this, I conclude.